What is up, everybody? We're going to be taking a look at the digestive system, specifically the physiology of the digestive system rather than the anatomy part. So this is looking at, assuming we already know how the digestive system, the names of the structures and everything else, now we're going to be taking a look at um, how do they actually function. And so we're going to be looking at the digestive system as the overall process of ingestion, digestion, absorption, and excretion. And that's going to be one of those that takes a lot of time and detail um, to take a look at. So we'll be taking a look at that. We'll be looking looking at not only parts of the GI tract, the tubes themselves and what they secrete, um, but also the accessory organs, including salivary glands, even the teeth and tongue could technically be uh, considered an accessory organs. But then we're talking about also the liver and gallbladder and pancreas. Okay, so taking a look at those things. Now, everything that we're going to be focusing on is the enzymes that are being secreted along the way within the stomach and so on. Uh, we're going to be looking at in this chapter doing some experiments to figure out what nutrients are present. Okay, so that's a lab experience that we're going to be doing and then talking about those and then um, being able to pull it all together. If I tell you on the test, you've got a meal that consists of you know, carbohydrates and proteins. Where are those things being uh, dealt with along the way? So that's the, the general progression as we go through of what we want to see. Now, the digestive system we know has all these things and, and a lot of this is review from the anatomy portion. So I'm going to refer to those. We'll go fast through some of these things and slow down and talk to I talk about uh, more in depth with some things that are more physiology in nature. So first of all, we need to understand that your digestive system is there in to exist in four major phases. Well, first of all, we must ingest our food. Okay, don't forget that piece. We got to take food into our bodies. We've got to do those things. Ingestion of the food is the first step. And then we've got to break it down. Now, first of all, digestion happens in two parts. We have mechanical digestion. You need to break this food down into smaller bits um, for the chemicals and everything to work on. So we have to mechanically break it down. That happens in the, uh, in the mouth. We chew it. We move it around. We break it down uh, mechanically into there. It's not a chemical process at all. It's broken down mechanically. Another place where mechanical breakdown or mechanical digestion digestion takes place is in the stomach. Um, the stomach is going to churn it up, mix it up. It's a big mixing chamber in, as, uh, in general. And so then we have mechanical breakdown there. Then we get into the chemical digestion. And chemical digestion takes place in many places um, throughout the path. First, starting right within the mouth. Then it start, uh, continues a little bit in the stomach. Then we go into the small intestine and large intestine and so on. So we got to look at where those things are broken down. And I'm going to deal with that in the progression as we go through this PowerPoint. We then absorb the nutrients, okay? That's kind of the point, is to take those nutrients in foods and absorb them into our systems, okay? So that absorption all takes place in the small intestine. People don't realize that. All chemical absorption takes place in the small intestine, and then the water absorption takes place in the large intestine. And then once it gets past that point, then we have to actually defecate. We have to remove those uh, undigested materials, otherwise it becomes toxic. It could actually be a poison to us. So there's four main phases to that, and then in this chapter, you're going to have to talk about what happens in each phase with each nutrient. So that becomes a little bit more complex. So we know that our digestive tract or GI tract, gastrointestinal tract is what that stands for. It's about 30 feet long um, going from the mouth to the anus. So we see all of those things, not anywhere near as long as the people might think, but when you think about surface areas and things like that, then it becomes a little bit more complex. We also have the things that affect the system um, that aren't part of this tube. And so then we come into a, what we call accessory organs. That'd be our teeth, our tongue, the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, and the salivary gland. So all of those things are part of the digestive system, but aren't part of the tube. Okay, so then we have uh, kind of those other portions um, with the colon itself is digestive in nature, but that's going to be for water absorption. But here we see some of those accessory organs that are part of that too. Okay, now let's take a look at the, the mouth itself. We already know the structures. We already know the hard palate and the soft palate and so on. We saw just past here, past the uvula is where that leads up to the nasal pharynx region. So that's where it leads up to the, the top. But when we think about the mouth itself, the glands, uh, the part for ingestion, we bring the food in, then we got to chew it up for mechanical. But then we have parts um, with those salivary glands that we learned about earlier. That's where the chemical absorption, that's where we add in the chemicals, okay, within saliva. So if you think about what's in saliva, a lot of it's water, okay, up to four liters of water a day. Um, it's a lot of water that we're going to be adding in there. And, and so we kind of think about that. That's the chemistry portion of everything. We have mucus to make sure they make sure it actually uh, 
slides the food through the gastrointestinal tract doesn't stick along the way. We have things of neutral pH, okay? We have antibiotics that are, antimicrobials, I should say, that are uh, keeping bacteria from growing in there. Um, so all of those things are components of your saliva itself, including within the salivary glands, we have salivary amylase, okay? This is gonna break down carbohydrates, okay? Right away in the mouth. And so this is kind of the parenting mistakes as you give your kid um, fruit juices. You might think fruits are, are healthy and, and all that, and they are, but they are also carbohydrate rich. And so what's happening is you can promote tooth, tooth decay by just drinking just straight um, fruit juices and so on, because those simple sugars get broken down even more by amylase. And so that leads to tooth decay. Um, we also add in a, uh, something called salivary or lingual, I should say, lingual lipase. Lingual lipase is a lipid digester, but it doesn't start working until you hit an acidic environment of the stomach. Remember, the mouth is neutral in, in, in its concentration. So um, so nothing actually functions there. We add it, but it doesn't start working until it hits the stomach. So all of those things are going on in the mouth for chemical digestion. Um, just with the carbohydrates, we added in the capability for lipid digestion, but that doesn't start until we hit the stomach. So we mix all that up with the saliva. We see that the, uh, the carbohydrates are starting to be broken down here, but then it gets moved to the back of the throat in the act of swallowing or deglutition. And so it gets uh, moved along the, the past the epiglottis, it gets moved down the esophagus, and so it gets moved down in a peristalsis type of motion, and so it squeezes its down, uh, way down in there, and sometimes it gets stuck because you don't have enough saliva or whatever, you take too big of a bite, um, you don't eat, but typically it goes in little packets and hits the stomach. Now here again, you see the uh, striations of the muscles going this way, across this way, and diagonally. That suggests that the stomach is also therefore mechanical digestion. So it's it's squeezing, it's crunching, it's mixing, it's churning, it's doing all those things, breaking food down mechanically. But this is also the mixing chamber where we're adding in um, the, the components for chemical digestion. Now we have two regions of that. Keep in mind that we have the chief cells as well as the parietal cells. So you have things with the hydrochloric acid. That's a sterilizer, but it's also an activi activator. It's going to activate your lingual lipase. What the uh, hydrochloric acid does also is it um, activates your pepsinogen. Pepsinogen is a protein digester that needs the acid to become pepsin. Okay, so the pepsinogen plus your peps uh, plus your hydrochloric acid secrete from two different layers of the stomach. They will mix, and now all of a sudden you've got this protein digester um, for for an enzyme. And proteins are a little bit different because carbohydrates they're like little beads that get stuck together. Okay, they're all, almost like a pearl necklace. And so to digest those, we've got different classes: monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides. We're just popping off the little beads. Okay, pretty simple. The the structure is very common um, and very simple to break off, and the, the enzyme just kind of pops them off at the ends. But when you get to proteins, it's this big old glob mess. Okay, so what, what what has to happen is we have to have many more enzymes uh, involved in there and we have to unravel this mess and then we start to pop off the individual amino acids. So digesting a protein is a lot tougher. First of all, it doesn't start in the mouth, it starts in the stomach. And then because the structure of the proteins, we have to unravel it and then we have to uh, break apart the chemical compounds. So it, it is a much more complex um, thing, which also leads to the reason why uh, it takes a lot longer to get hungry after a protein-rich meal. Um, it's just more complex to have to digest, no, not only location-wise, but also structurally. Okay, another thing that we're going to find is uh, within the stomach area for secretions is chymosin. Okay, that's going to be for like the butter fat of milk and, and things like that. Um, we find certainly more of the the, the carbohydrate digesters and, and so on. So we have all those uh, structures found inside for mechanical, but we start to see some chemical digesters. Now, this is also where oh, I should back up to the immunoglobulin A from saliva. Immunoglobulin A doesn't do anything in the stomach here, but that'll grab onto um, vitamin B12. Okay, so even in the stomach, that starts to attach to that. And so once it hits, leaves the stomach and goes into the duodenum itself, if that uh, immunoglobulin A and also, I'm sorry, not the immunoglobulin A, I meant to say intrinsic factor. Once that attaches to your vitamin B12, then the small intestine can absorb it.
Okay, so all of those things, immunoglobulin A, yeah, that's that um, that's that antimicrobial I was talking about before. So just kind of keep those things in mind um, for the functions of what's going on within the stomach. Okay, now we take a look in the stomach. Um, we find some problems where the the liners themselves. I mentioned hydrochloric acid. It's the same hydrochloric acid we use in in chem lab. Okay, so it's it's a pH of two, and so this liner has the mucus just like within uh, the saliva itself and mucus the stomach itself will secrete saliva as well to protect. Otherwise, we lose that and it starts to burn a hole and that's an ulcer. Okay, it's actually caused by bacteria more than stress or anything like that. Now, the phases of the stomach are actually anticipatory right here. We it doesn't, it's not like food just plops down in here and it starts just going away. We start to think about um, that and prepping for what's coming. So the stomach will actually start to secrete and start to kind of move around. You get your gurgles and everything else just before you eat. Then it'll be mixing in the gastric phase. And then actually there is a shutting off phase when as the stomach prepares to um, evacuate its uh, its contents, its chyme at that point, um, evacuate that into the small intestine. Okay, now the small intestine also has, if you remember, we have all these little ducts, the common bile duct, we have, or sorry, the bile, the hepatic duct, we have the cystic duct forming the common bile duct. And then we find even after the common bile duct, we find where the pancreas is going to come in um, with a, a pancreatic duct and form the hepatopancreatic ampulla. Okay, that's all review from uh, things that we had in the last chapter. So really, when we think about the stomach that leads into the small intestine, we also have to see right here where the all three of these organs come together and dump into the small intestine as well. So remember, out of the liver, this is where uh the bile is going to be now bile is not an enzyme what it does is it actually is another mechanical breakdown emulsifies fats into smaller little globules so the lipids or the lipases can work better we have concentrated bile right here from the gallbladder and then we have all these enzymes that come out of the pancreas this is your turbocharged salivary gland all the enzymes that really most of the uh chemical digestion takes place because of your pancreas, okay? And that happens right here within the small intestine, starting with the duodenum, going to the uh, the jejunum, and finishing up in the ileum, okay? So all the small intestine, we have the chemical breakdown of food. So with the pancreas, what it does, um, I mentioned the, the bile and concentrated bile before, so that's breaking down mechanically the lipids. Then we have the pancreatic lipase that breaks down chemically the lipids. We have the, um, the the three of the zymogens, uh, we'll classify it that way, uh, the procarboxypeptidase and all that stuff, that's, those are more of the protein digesters. And then we also have the pancreatic amylase. So all three of the nutrients are, um, we have enzymes secreted by the pancreas. All three of the nutrients are continuing to be broken down in the small intestine. Okay. So that's all going on. And also within that is going to be the small intestine. Okay. So within, uh, I'm sorry, the absorption of the small intestine. So also in Inside the small intestine, we see these finger-like things called villi. Those villi are there to increase the surface area. And even on the surface of that, we see microvilli um, that are going to be going and increasing the surface area there too. Those are there for nutrient absorption, most certainly. Somebody calculated out the combined surface area of the microvilli and villi within the small intestine would be over the span of an entire tennis court, okay? That's how much absorption area is going to be there. Where those nutrients go, because they're all broken down, um, the proteins are broken down in amino acids, um, your carbohydrates are broken down into very simple carbohydrates, because um, we have many of them stuck together. Even your lipids are going to be broken down into components. Those all go to the liver. That's your assembly area. We take those nutrients, we assemble them into other things, and and, and deal with it that way. Then we get into the uh, the large intestine. And the, once things have left the small intestine, they push down just like with the, the throat we have, or the esophagus, we have peristalsis. Small intestine will continue to move those and into the large intestine. Once it's hit here, all the chemical digestion and absorption of nutrients is done. And all we're going to do is get water and vitamins absorbed through here. And so notice that in the human, we also have a sigmoid colon. One more little stretch. We're dissecting the uh, cat. So we have ascending, transverse, descending. Humans have another little uh, switch right here called the sigmoid colon. This is all water absorption and vitamin absorption. 
Okay. Then we get down into the rectum itself. This is where, so this is all one big drying chamber, if you will. This is where it gets compacted into feces. So the feces itself is, is compacted in the rectum and then excreted through the anus. Okay. And so that anal canal actually has two sets of nerves. Um, one up here and one down here. One is unconscious control and one is conscious control. So you have involuntary and voluntary muscles. So that allows for defecation, kind of dials up and constricts down and so on. So there you have it from the very uh, beginning portions of it all. Okay, when you have to ingest food, you mechanically break it down in the mouth. When you're chewing, you mechanically break down the nutrients again in the stomach and even a little bit of mechanical breakdown of at least lipids with um with your uh with your bile then we have chemical breakdown and that's tricky because chemical breakdown of carbohydrate starts in the mouth continues in the stomach and finishes up in the small intestine chemical digestion of lipids starts in the stomach even though it's added in the mouth it doesn't start working till the stomach and finishes up in the small intestine and then proteins it starts in the stomach and finishes in the uh in the small intestine so you got to watch out for that now absorption um, is the third stage of the whole digestive process. Absorption of nutrients takes place in the small intestine, but absorption of water and vitamins takes place in the large intestine. And then we have to defecate, okay? And that goes out through the anus. That has every component in there. Um, take a look at your different enzymes. Take a look at who secretes it. Take a look at where it starts working. Take a look at what that secretion works on. Because it, to sum it all up, when you take a look at things that are on the plate, and you're going to have to basically figure out all the mechanisms um, through the process of defecation as it goes. So that concludes just a kind of a brief overview. You have an outline of your notes. I encourage you to follow along with that and, and we should be good to go for this chapter. There's going to be lab involved. And so make sure that you're paying attention to what tests you do, the nutrients that the, uh, the individual test tests for, and what we use those nutrients for as well. Okay, that should bring you through this entire chapter.